Today, in this talk, I will present um, our new grid printer, a pretty expressive grid printer. So let's get started. Grid printers take as input um, a document in a printing language and an optimality objective parameter. For most printers, this is usually a quantity known as a page width limit, which is the maximum number of characters that each line should uh, um, can have. Uh, and then it outputs an optimal layout. More elaborately, um, the document encodes a set of layouts that the user wish to um, express. And the printer's job is that it should read this uh, objective parameter and combine that with the optimality objective um, to pick the optimal layout and then present that as a, uh, to users. As an example, let's say that um, a document encodes these two layouts. They are both function application, but they are styled differently. One is in the horizontal style, and the other is in the vertical style. So um, let's say with the width limit, page width limit of 15, uh, with the optimality objective of trying to avoid overflow over the page width limit whenever possible, and then try to minimize the number of lines. Well, in this case, that creates that line, the page width limit. And we can see that both layouts are under the page width limit. And so the one with the minimal number of line, which is the first layout, would be, the one, would be the optimal one. But let's say that if I change the page width limit to 10, in this case, the first layout has an overflow, but the second layout does not have an overflow. And so the second layout is the optimal one. Now, there are so many uh, print printers in the literature. Why? Why isn't there just only one uh, print printer? Well, the answer is that different print printers make different trade-offs in the expressiveness of the printing language, optimality objective, and the performance. Um, in particular, we can group uh, these printers in the literature into two categories. We call the first one the traditional printers, and the second one the arbitrary choice printers. The characteristics of these printers are as follows. The traditional printers has poor expressiveness, relatively. It has poor optimality objective, but it has really great, really great performance. On the other hand, the arbitrary choice printers has an okay expressiveness. It has an okay optimality objective, but it has poor performance. And that's a bummer. Because um, two years ago, I wanted to create a code formatter for a uh, racket um, source code. And so I emailed my uh, co-author, Justin, asking for his advice. And he basically said that, yeah, you need to pick one of the printer from uh, these two categories. And you need to pick like which one you want to be bad about. And so natural question is that, can we do better? right? And in particular, I want um, something like this. I want a printer that has good expressiveness, has good optimality objective, and ideally I want good um, performance as well, but if we cannot achieve that, then reasonable performance is kind of like the next best thing that I want. And just to give you a hint, yes, and that is our print printer uh, Pi A uh, that we will talk about today. Um, the main challenge, of course, is that um, the attention in the expressiveness, optimality objective, and the performance, right? And so how can we make it work? Well, let's try to break it down. Um, we want good expressiveness. And so let's take a look at the existing printers and see what we can learn from them. The traditional printers target uh, a printing language that is called the traditional printing language, which has poor expressiveness. And this is partly because it cannot express layouts that differ in more than just white space, which does occur in practice. For example, in Python, we have this kind of, uh, this kind of code, right? We may wish that we, that we can create a, uh, a document to encode these two layouts, where one of them is a string concatenation in a horizontal, in a horizontal style, and the other is in the vertical style. But Python mandates that if you write the string concatenation uh, vertically, you need to put parentheses around it. 
But this extra pair parenthesis cannot be expressed in the traditional printing language. All layouts must be the same modular white spaces in the traditional printing language. Um, traditional printing language also cannot express alignment. What do we mean by that? Well, it means this kind of thing where code with alignment has indentation that is sensitive to content in the preceding line. Um, and this is con to contrast with um, non-alignment, which is something that traditional printing language can express very well. Um, and that is it indents by a fixed amount of space, um, like two spaces. So that's a uh, traditional printing language. Let's now talk about the arbitrary choice printing language. It has an okay expressiveness. And that is because it can express layouts that differ in more than just white space. It can do that fine. It can also express alignment fine. But it has one downside, which is that it cannot express unaligned concatenation. And this requires some explanation. So ideally, we want to construct a document in a way that mirror the AST structure. Right? So here I have um, return followed by the function call. And so ideally, I want to construct a document that is consisting of the document for the return, the document for the function call, and the document for semicolon, and then they concatenate them together. But it turns out that in the arbitrary size printing language, you do not have a construct to do this kind of concatenation. And so if you want to express something like this, you need to refactor your document in a significant way to make it possible, and that's not ideal. So that is why um, I say that the traditional printers has poor expressiveness, and why the arbitrary size printers has okay expressiveness. So what do we do? We want good expressiveness. We want the best of both worlds. So um, we address this by creating a printing language that we call Sigma E. Sigma E, um, the goal is that it should be able to express all features from the traditional and arbitrary size printing language. So that's a key idea. All right, the next bit is that we want to have good automotive objective, right? So again, let's try to learn from other printers. The traditional printers has poor optimality objective, and this might come as a surprise if you uh, are familiar with the pretty printing literature, because they say differently, they say otherwise. If you read some papers, they will say that the traditional printers can output a layout that minimizes the number of lines, and it does not exceed the width page width limit whenever possible. But that is wrong. Here's a counter example. Um, I can construct a document that encodes these two layouts. Um, the left one does not exceed the page width limit and also has fewer lines. But the traditional printers will pick the right one. And this is due to how it employs a greedy algorithm to uh, pick uh, which layout to present to users. And greedy algorithm cannot look ahead into the future um, to determine the optimality. And so that's not ideal for our purpose. On the other hand, the arbitrary choice printers has an okay optimality objective. And that is because it does not suffer from this problem. It minimizes the number of lines whenever possible uh, and avoids the overflow whenever possible. But it has one downside, which is that it errors when there is an unavoidable overflow, which again does occur in practice. For example, if you have a long string literal that you want to format, chances are it probably exceeds the page width limit, and it wouldn't be a good user experience to error. So that's why I say that the traditional printers has poor optimality objective, and why the arbitrary choice printers has okay optimality objective. So let's see. We want to have good optimality objective. We saw that the greedy algorithm is not what we want. And so what we will do is that we will formulate the problem as a dynamic programming task. And in order to, avoid, uh, in order to deal with the uh, overflow, right, we um, devise a concept that we call cost factory. This is going to be our optimality objective parameter. Um, and it is a set of functions or values satisfying certain properties that the user can provide to you customize the optimal objective. I'm not going to go into detail for what these certain properties are, but if you are math nerds, 
the, um, this is, um, let me recall, um, totally ordered a monoid with trans translational invariance, something, something. Um, here's an example of a cost factory. Um, so you do not need to read this into detail, right? I just want to show you what it looked like. Um, you can provide the types for the cost. Uh, you can customi customize that. You can say, you can say uh, what the cost should be for each text placement. You can say what the cost for each new line should be. You can say how to combine the cost together. You can say which cost is less than the other cost. And this all together can um, allow you to express some really good optimality objective, like trying to minimize some of square overflow past the page width limit, and then minimize the number of lines. All right, the last bit is that um, we want to have a reasonable performance. I'm not going to talk in, uh, about the great performance of the traditional printers, because that is accomplished by having a greedy algorithm, which, again, we already decided that we are not going to do. So let's see why the arbitrary choice printers has poor performance. Well, there are several reasons, but one reason is that the document in the arbitrary choice printing language can have a choice, and that creates the DAX structure directed a cyclic graph. For example, if I have this document on the right, it creates a choice between two ways uh, to format X and Y, where X and Y can be arbitrary, arbitrary document. And if you write this down diagrammatically, it looks like that. X and Y are shared. They are reuses. But if you treat this document as a tree, uh, like how, how you would normally do, then this DAC is unfolded, and the size of the DAC is doubled. Right? And this is just only for one choice. If you have multiple choices, then the size of the DAC could be exponentially uh, large compared to the size of the tree. And so to address this issue, we will do memoization by using the document identity. And to achieve the reasonable performance, we will use a data structure called Pareto Frontier um, of low dimension to track the optimal layout. And the Pareto Frontier of low uh, dimension is really great because you can do operations like merging two Pareto Frontiers together in a really efficient way. All right, so um, I'm not going to uh, go into the rest um, due to the time limit. So let me just walk through real quick what else is in the paper. Um, we have a survey of existing printers in the literature, and that's, it is how I can come up with these counter examples. Uh, we have details of our printing language, uh, Sigma E. We have the printing algorithm for Pi E. We have functional correctness. Um, for Pi E, what does it mean for our printer to be correct? And that consists of two theorems, validity and optimality. And we prove this in the Lean Theorem Prover. We have a time complexity analysis of Pi E. We have a formal framework to compare expressive, no, expressiveness power of uh, printing languages. And this is, uh, is going to tell what do we mean precisely when I talk about express features or express layouts, and what does it mean for a printing language to be more expressive than the other. I also implement Pi E concretely as a printer uh, that is called Pretty Expressive. We have that in OCaml and Racket. And we evaluate Pretty Expressive, uh, uh, pretty expressive against other pre uh, pretty printers in um, and also in practical settings um, as a part of the Racket code format formatter. And the result shows that it is competitive in the performance and it is much prettier. So that's it. This is um, our pretty expressive pretty printer. Um, these are the links uh, for the full paper. Before I end the talk, though, I, I want to thank uh, these people for making this talk possible. And yeah, I'd be happy to take any questions. If you have questions for Oak, please step up to the microphone. And Oak, please unplug so we can get the next person set up. Yep. Well, I have one question. 
So I often find that I have code that mixes different languages. Maybe it's a string with some code inside of it, or maybe it's SQL like we saw in the previous talk. So do you have any tips or how to work around this problem? Or what does the racket formatter do? Well, I mean, one of the reasons why uh, I want our printer to be expressive is precisely because uh, the racket language has like this hash lang mechanism, right, that you can use arbitrary syntax. And so when I want to make a code, racket code formatter, I wish for something expressive so that I can support all this stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Question? Hi, uh, great talk, thank you. Um, I was wondering, I mean, people have uh, fairly strong opinions about how their code is uh, supposed to be formatted. So I was wondering, um, you know, how much you can kind of have the person writing uh, a formatter and using your framework to kind of, you know, tweak these little tiny things that people sometimes care about, or is like a lot, a lot of it is like controlled by these optimality functions and um, kind of more automatically chosen what's optimal layout. It's like what's the what's the trade-off here? I guess what I'm asking. Yeah, right. So if I understand correctly, what you ask, um, so there are kind of like ways to control what gets output, right? One way is that you express it in the uh, gram in, in in the document itself. And the other way is adjusting the optimality objective and something like that. So, I mean, it's a trade-off and you need to, I guess you, you could, could just uh, the help from both of them, yeah. So, I guess what I'm trying to ask is if you are, like, you have really, really strong opinions, can you make those opinions, uh, ah. can you make, can make the framework understand what exactly what you want? Okay, okay, so, so, sorry, I, I think I better understand your question now. So. This talk is mostly about a print printer, right? It does not talk about like, you know, which style you prefer. That would be more about the code formatter software. And I mean, I don't have opinion on that, but like you can be opinion that, yeah. Thank you yes. so much. Yep. It's a yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks again, Oak.